Hello, my name is John, and I plan to be your one-stop shop for action movies, comic book movies, and the occasional horror movie reviews and rankings. And Halloween is just one week away, and so I felt like doing a horror review. And one of my personal favorite franchises is the Final Destination franchise. So I figured, why not talk about the original? So let's get into it. The original Final Destination is from the year 2000, and it's directed by James Wong, W-O-N-G. Not James Wan, the guy who did The Conjuring and Saw. This is a different director. And it brought something to the horror slasher genre that we hadn't seen in a while. And I do consider this a slasher, even though there's not a physical person chasing them. And I kind of hearken it back to A Nightmare on Elm Street, but I don't, I don't think it's as quite as good as A Nightmare on Elm Street. But I do hearken back because when A Nightmare on Elm Street came out, prior to it coming out, most slashers were just people stabbing, getting stabbed. And then A Nightmare on Elm Street came out, and it brought this new innovative way to come up with creative kills and deaths for the slasher genre. But then that franchise kind of died out because they made Freddy too comedic. And A New Nightmare was a little ahead of its time. But then Scream came out and the genre got popular again. But once again, it was just people getting stabbed. But then Final Destination came out and it brought this whole new concept that brought back these very creative ways to come up with these slasher kills. So now getting into the creativity of some of the sequences. It has one of my favorite opening sequences in a horror movie. I just love the way it sets it up with like John Denver and everything. Plus the sequence itself, I feel like it's shot in a chaotic sense. And, you know, if you're in a plane crash, it's obviously going to be a pretty chaotic experience. And I also think it has one of the best jump scares that I've ever seen. You know, I'm not a big jump scare fan. They don't always work for me. Most of the time they don't. But this movie has a jump scare that I think works perfectly. That being Terry's death. And just, it's just a bust that comes out of nowhere. It's awesome. And then, I think this movie does, this original movie does something that the sequels kind of don't always do very well. Or don't even attempt to do. And that's making the deaths not look like freak accidents, even though they are. Like, Todd's death looks like a suicide. Miss Luton's death looks like a murder. And even the opening plane sequence itself looks, the way it's done, you could easily assume, like, the FBI and investigators could easily assume that someone put something in the plane to make, to make that happen. And so I think this particular entry in the franchise does a really good job of making the freak accidents not necessarily look like freak accidents. That being said, I don't think the actual deaths themselves are quite as creative, and I don't necessarily think the climactic sequence with Claire and Alex, it just doesn't work that well for me. I'm not a big fan of just wires flailing about. I just, it's not for me. And so I guess, moving on, talk about the characters and the acting. It's acted pretty well. You have Sean William Scott playing a great kind of comedic relief type of character that could potentially get annoying, but he does a great job with it, you know. Obviously, he's known for being Stifler on American Pie, but I think he does a great job in this movie as well. And then Tony Todd, he does a great job portraying the personification of death in these movies. The visuals in this movie are pretty good. They do a good job portraying a sense of dread. And like I said, the opening sequence, they do a good job portraying the chaotic nature of that situation. But one part of the visuals that I don't think is as good, at least hasn't aged well, is the final act at Claire's house. You know, you have wires flailing about and a bunch of, like, electricity and stuff. And I just don't think some of those effects have aged particularly well, from my opinion. But I guess moving on to the story, this is one of the brighter aspects of this movie, I think. 
because it just does a really good job writing Alex into a place that you just feel hopeless. It just makes the audience feel hopeless for him. Because first, the opening sequence, he knows the plane's going to explode, and then it explodes. That does not look particularly good from a legal standpoint, evidence standpoint. And then his best friend, it looks like he killed himself. It looks like he committed suicide, and then people like blame him for bringing all of that guilt onto his best friend, and then it looks like that he then it looks like he murdered his teacher that survived and it just makes you feel hopeless for this character and they do a good job with that making you root kind of root for him because you know he didn't do all those things and so it just it kind of that just adds i love the way they write all of that and write alex's character that being said some of the dialogue isn't the best but it's nothing that's particularly bad to ruin this movie moving on to the sound the sound design is pretty good it does a good job highlighting smaller sounds that you might not necessarily hear in real life but they do that because they want to show that the smallest little thing can make a domino effect that ends up with a freak accident happening and i just think they do a really good job with that in this movie so overall, I think Final Destination is a very innovative and good entry into the horror and slasher genre. It has a great concept. It has good acting, good characters, good writing. And even though it might not necessarily be my personal favorite in this franchise, I do think the original Final Destination deserves a four. Thanks for watching my video. If you've seen Final Destination, I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you like this video, if you like me, go ahead and smash that thumbs up button. And go ahead and smash that subscribe button if you want a one-stop shop for action movies, comic book movies, and the occasional horror movie reviews and rankings. And I will return next time when I see you again.